This animation shows how we test DNA for single nucleotide polymorphisms in individuals. To begin, we know we inherit our genes from our parents. During development of our parents' sex cells, egg and sperm, each pair of chromosomes can swap genetic material in a process called meiosis. Essentially, new genetic combinations are formed and we inherit these unique single sets of chromosomes from our parents during conception. The single nucleotide polymorphism, or SNP, described earlier in the story, is located on chromosome 5. Remember, there are two copies of this chromosome, one derived from each of the parents. We need to find out whether the individual has inherited a G genetic variant from both parents, the A variant from both parents, or perhaps a G from one parent and an A from the other. G and A are known as the alleles of the SNP. We can test several hundred different SNPs in many genes simultaneously using microarrays. Here, genetic probes are spotted onto a solid support, such as a glass microscope slide. Let's take a closer look at one of the microarray spots that contains the genetic probe for our SNP of interest. Zooming in, we see that it comprises many identical genetic probe molecules. The probe is single-stranded and is termed the left apex probe because it matches the genome sequence to the left-hand side of the SNP. Looking closely at the free end of one of the DNA probe molecules, we can see that the last base, termed the three prime base, is a T, which is the T base next to the SNP site in the genome. The genetic test is initiated when a solution is added to the surface of the microarray. It contains copies of the individual's fragmented DNA, called the template, and a cocktail of enzymes and nucleotides. These nucleotides are labelled with fluorescent colour, so that the four different nucleotide bases, A, C, G and T, can be distinguished. Within seconds, the template, which is generally longer than the probes, will line up with its complementary probe sequence, A's pairing with T's, G's pairing with C's, forming a partial double-stranded molecule. Because the first base of the template overlap is a C, a complementary G fluorescent nucleotide base is added to the three prime end of the left apex probe molecule. It indicates that the G allele is present at the SNP site. Alternately, the template could have a T base instead of a C base. In this case, the left apex probe extends by a single fluorescent A base, indicating an A allele is present at the SNP site. If all of the left apex probes within the microarray spot were extended by an A base, this would indicate that the individual has inherited the A allele from both parents. Or, if all of the left apex probes in the spot were extended by a G base, the G allele was inherited from both parents. The third possibility, half the left apex probe molecules extend by a G base and the remaining half extend by A, indicates that a G allele was inherited from one parent and an A from the other parent. Note that multiple spots scattered across the array can contain the same left apex probe. This helps make sure the testing is accurate and reliable. The microarray could also include other types of probes that can give additional evidence for the genetic test result. These are called allele-specific probes. For our example, such a probe would have a G base at its 3' prime end, equivalent to the G allele. This probe would be called the left allele G-specific apex probe. During the reaction, the individual's template DNA will hybridize to this probe as normal, and the G base at the end of the probe will pair with the C base in the template. This time, the next base in the template is a C, which means only a fluorescent G base can bind to the end of the probe. However, if the template has a T base at the site of the SNP, base pairing will not occur between the probe and template at this position the probe molecule will remain unreacted. If the spot containing the left allele G-specific apex probes does end up with a fluorescent G-base reaction signal, 
then this gives evidence that the SNP site does contain a G, but it does not tell us if the A-SNP allele is present. Other spots on the array will contain left allele A-specific apex probes. These probes will have an A base at their 3' prime end instead of the G base. The template DNA molecule that has a T base complementary to this A base will now base pair to the probe, allowing the single base extension of the fluorescent G base to occur, and gives evidence that allele A is present at the SNP site under investigation. We can confirm the test result by using further genetic probes, this time based on the opposite side of the SNP site, and on the other strand of the DNA double helix. Some microarray spots will contain these right apex probe molecules that undergo single base extension reactions similar to the left apex probes. Likewise for right allele specific apex probes. Within just a few minutes, the majority of the probes at each of the microarray spots will have reacted with the individual's template DNA. The final fluorescent extension results are collected from each of the spots that contain genetic probes specific for this SNP. The intensity of the four colors are measured for each spot, and the data are assembled into a SNP chart. Statistical algorithms can quickly determine the final genotype based on the chart data. A GG homozygous individual will have a SNP chart genetic testing pattern dramatically different from either AA homozygotes or GA heterozygotes.